trainer, speaker, author, and coach to thousands of professionals and organizations worldwide, including NASA, the U.S. Air Force, USACE, U.S. Army, the Department of Transportation, the FBI. Your friend, Phil. Over to you, Phil. Hey, my fellow project managers, I hope you're doing awesome. You've heard it, you've heard it all. I'm telling you, you can pass this exam. But I wanted to add further value to you by just giving you a few ideas about how exam questions can trip you up. And if you have been trying to get certified over and over again without success, I want you to begin to look at questions in a different light, okay? So this is to give you a more pragmatic way of addressing the problem. Yes, I've given you that page, the stamp out page. Yes, I've given you tips about pages in the PMBOK guide, but I want to focus a little bit on how questions can trip you up. So a few days ago, I was playing with a few questions, kind of kicking them around back and forth between our students. And I realized that they were getting tripped up by a certain question characteristic. They're getting tripped up on questions that have multiple dimensions. So I want to address this multiple dimension question writing approach that people might be struggling with. Maybe you've come across such a thing as well. This might help you, okay? So the questions are usually you are a project manager doing X, Y, Z. Let me just go to the whiteboard, chart this out a little bit, and you'll get the idea of what I'm trying to say. All right. So it usually starts off like this. You are a project manager. And they usually tell you what you're doing. You are doing that, whatever it is. Okay, we'll just say you're doing, just put X variable. Okay. Now, where I see people beginning to get distracted is when the question shifts into the reasoning behind what you're doing. And I'll explain this in a, in a few seconds. So think about it. You're a project manager, you're doing X. And then the question could follow up in order to achieve Y. You're a project manager, you're doing X, whatever that variable is, in order to achieve Y, where you will derive A variable Z. And then a red herring. A red herring is added to the mix. What do I mean? A distractor. So, sum it to the effect of while you are doing X, you realize a problem which could affect outcome Z. Are you following the line of thought? Okay, so this is a question with various aspects and variables. If you don't keep your eye on 
this first one I'm gonna make these different colors let's make this blue let's make this a darker red or brownish and this I'll make this green all right if you don't keep your eye on the blue you will get the question wrong whatever the question ends up being if you don't keep your eye on the blue what you are doing you end up getting the question wrong the question usually ends with a big finish such as it's usually something to the effect of what should you do next are you looking at these variables are you seeing how these variables are being set up your project manager you're doing X that's that's the first piece of the question all right now they're beginning to derail you or let's say beginning to test your focus and your understanding as one of my students former student now PMP boss would say Dre he would say they want to find out if you're loyal <laughs> they, want, they want to find out are you still loyal to the PMBOK guide in other words are you really paying attention to what you are doing as a project manager and are you really aware of what you should be focusing on as a project manager you see so by the time you get to point two you're beginning to get a little bit of a pull a gravitational pull away from one this is why questions sometimes appear very ambiguous because they put in a number of variables but it's done in a subtle manner so your project manager doing X in order to achieve Y where you will derive Z so you're doing X because you want to achieve Y and from Y you're gonna derive Z whatever that is while you're doing X you realize a problem which could affect outcome Z what should you do next let me show you what this question has done this question has taken your focus away from number one what are you doing what should you do next two and three let's put in three three distractor it said a problem which could affect outcome Z but still that's not really focusing on I'm doing item one what should I do next item two what I'm trying to achieve and all these other things they could be red herrings on the question okay I'm not saying every single question is like this but I'm trying to show you how your focus could easily be taken away your focus could be taken away from what exactly you should be focusing on and this is why some folks may have trouble on the test because your attention is being taken away from the real thing you should be looking at and I mean someone could come away thinking oh but I answered the question based on three I realized the problem and what should I do next solve the problem no what should you do next could be a number of could do next or should do next you know the question could be fine-tuned to say which process should you do next or it could just be a what should you do next but you don't want to lose sight of the first point I realized that questions like this were throwing my students all over the place and they were getting distracted you know I think I had on one question I had zero 
correct answers. On some questions, I had like a 60% correct answer. You know, and this is what the PMI does, which is why when the questions are served, just know they've been passed around the block. They've been tested. So by the time the question is coming to you, almost guaranteed, a certain number of people will always get that question wrong because they are focusing on the wrong thing. They're not answering the question, focusing on the first point. They got lost along the way. And this is just one one scenario there are many different scenarios i could paint you know but the overarching thing is as you see these questions do not forget what you are really doing in the very first stage if you do you're going to be derailed and you're going to get the question wrong and and this is one of the reasons why certain questions are not home runs for people okay so talking about passing the exam you really need to strategically and intentionally look at the the moving parts you, you know you see a question written as one block then it shifts to another you need to feel that shift you need to know oh wait a minute that question it shifted it they've moved from what I'm doing to something else what are they really looking for in the final you know, the big hurrah at the end. What are they really looking for? When they give you that final line, you can either make or break your experience by following this tip. Don't get lost. Hold on to that first thing. And as you're navigating the question, always remember, you're doing this. You're doing X. You're doing Y. You're doing Z. Still along some rather elementary lines, but nonetheless, something that could help you. You could get questions such as, you are creating or developing a document A document X. This document will be used to Y. The document can also be used for whatever. You could get a what should you do next based on knowing which document you're working on or you could get which tool and technique will you use to create X. Something like that. There are many, many ways, you know, if I was a question writer, I could cause a whole lot of havoc just by messing around with these four blocks one block of what is going on, a second block of what could result from what is going on, and I could even be more malicious as a question writer, and I could totally throw you off. I could give you th streams of thought, streams of possibilities that could derail you by giving you candy PM candy, things that excite you but are just totally irrelevant. Totally irrelevant. Let me give you another example. 
another example. Okay, let's look at a scenario whereby you get a question. Here is a network diagram. Okay. There are 12 nodes. One of the nodes, or I should say one of the branches, is hanging. What do I mean by that? Well, if you haven't seen one of those network diagrams with a hanging branch that isn't really joining to the others, it's going off on its own. So there are 12 nodes, one of the branches is hanging. Here are all the activity durations. The customer would like the deliverable on the day you end. Okay, and then it could build on that to say, what is the project slack? If I gave you a big old network diagram with all these fancy arrows and images, that's enough to excite anyone that has studied that. So imagine if I gave you a big old network diagram to go with this. A lot of folks would rub their hands in glee, like I used to in those days. Oh, I've read this. I know this. And start, just go out of the gate and begin to solve that network diagram like a bat being let out of out of nowhere. However... If you read the question carefully, you realize that there's no need for you to solve a single thing. If the customer would like the deliverable on the day you end, then you've got no slack. You've got zero slack. There is absolutely no need for you to start solving anything here. This is an example of where you would do so much work, 10 minutes worth of work, only to realize that there was no point. Another example of such could be, here's a network diagram. There are 12 nodes. One of the branches is hanging. Here are the durations. And then what is the free slack of task A. Task A is the first task. Now if you get a question like this, again you could get excited and begin solving till the cows come home, but task A, if it's a, a network diagram where there is you know one beginning task, task A, the free slack will be zero. You don't need to solve nothing. It's going to be zero. The same as a task at the end of the chain. It will be zero. So getting all excited and solving this network diagram is only going to waste your time. You, you will get the answer right, but you would have wasted 10 minutes on a network diagram that is asking you, what is the free slack of an activity that's on the critical path? Or what is the total slack of an activity on the critical path? Do you see what I'm saying? I'm trying to get you to see these questions for what they are. A lot of these questions, a lot of these questions, they don't need as much effort as people put in. People put in a lot of effort, but unfortunately, they didn't need to. They didn't need to do what they're doing. 
okay? So I hope this is helping you. I hope this is, you know, kind of turning on the light bulbs bit by bit for you to see that the reasons why certain folks may not do well on a question is not because they haven't studied. It's not because they didn't read. But more than anything else, it's because they are not paying attention to what the question is asking. They might just be in the dark. They may be oblivious, you see. So these are just a few examples of how questions are engineered and how people could totally miss the boat when it comes to answering these questions. So let's uh, have a little recap. First of all, I gave you the breakdown of X. You're doing X in order to achieve Y. That just showed you red herrings could be deliberately placed in questions. It's testing your loyalty, like Dre said. You know. Secondly, you could be given a, oh, you're creating this document or you're creating this plan. You know, which tool and technique would you use to create this plan or that thing? And you'll be given a tool and technique that maps back to the process where that thing is created or where that thing is done. And then I'm giving you some more problem-oriented, formula-oriented type question. It looks formula-oriented on the surface or technical on the surface, but it's really logic, you know. So you've got to get your logic game up. When it comes to network diagrams, you've got to know the definitions inside out to know when logic is needed to solve the problem versus a calculator, a calculator. So don't make the mistake of wasting time on questions where the answer is staring at you in the face. On the critical path, you got zero, zero slack, zero float in all of the activities, free float, total float. If the end date of the project is the same as customer required due date as in the previous one, zero project float. So you got to know the theory behind whatever you're doing, okay? Don't just read blindly, but know the theory, okay? And practice questions that are tested and tried, you know. I tell people, don't just jump on these ridiculously cheap, free mock exams on the internet. No, I didn't say companies. I'm talking about people that just go to the internet and do a search. What is wrong with you? Are you kidding me? You're, you're playing with your $555 by searching for these crummy questions on the internet. And you're jubilating that you found a treasure trove of rubbish on the internet. Seriously? Don't do it. If you haven't heard it before, there's a lot of poison out there. I'm amazed, watch this, a student jubilated about finding four mock exams on the web. I got a little bit concerned, I'm like, there's no reason for you to do this. <laughs> you know, have you, have you ever had a kid that's still looking for more? Even though you gave them everything they needed, they're still looking for more. That's how I felt, because I'm like, my goodness, you've not, even, you've not even done the mock exams we gave you. Why are you scouring the internet for free questions? Why? Do you want to harm yourself? Don't you know there's poison in that stuff? True story. I end up getting these mock exams. And I go through the mock exams and I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I hold my head in disbelief. The very first one that I come across gives me some outlandish process name from prehistoric times, from the Pembok guide that even the PMI forgot. I, I probably have the Pembok, yeah, I probably have that edition somewhere in my bookshelf, but the PMI forgot about it because it's asking for something from 10 years ago. I'm like, oh my gosh, where did you get this? poison from I couldn't believe it I went to the second one and there in big bold letters at the top 
was, this is based on the Pembok 4th edition. What? We are, we are on the 6th edition. You're, you're taking stuff into your system from a previous edition? I almost lost it. I almost lost it. I composed an email really quick and, you know, save yourself. <laughs> get, get off this train. This train is leading. This is a train to nowhere. What? Look, this is one of the reasons people fail because they took a mock exam that told them, oh, you're ready. Meanwhile, the mock exam was just absolute rubbish. Not based on the current guide, not even written properly. It amazes me how, how people just put their money at risk, hard-earned money at risk. You know? Don't do it. Don't do it. So, please, take mock exams that are tested and tried and have a track record. Mock exams where if you are stuck on a question, you can ask a human that will actually respond to you. Because a lot of people are taking these goofy old mocks that are worse than poison. Fourth edition? Are you kidding me? Some people even take mocks based on the second edition. You know, it's funny. I heard from a question writer on social media that was saying, it's amazing. This stuff, I created this stuff like over, I don't even remember when, like eons ago. People are still using what I created, even though it's wrong. But there's nothing I can do. People just keep passing it around. Oh, take this link. Watch this. Do this. Honestly, this is your friend Phil keeping it real for you. There's no other channel where it gets as raw as this. Because people don't want to tell it like it is. I don't care. I'll tell you. I want to save you. Don't do it. Please don't do it. People say my funds are low. Yes, okay, funds are low, but that's no reason to get crazy, bad crazy, start doing dumb things that are going to land you in more trouble, make you pay $325 more to the PMI. Don't do it. Please, don't do it. Don't do it. I would rather you took no mock exam than taking contaminated mocks. Enough said. A word is enough for the wise. I'm going to get off my soapbox. Let me see if there are any questions come in or any comments. Any confusion that you need straightening out on. Any questions? Any questions? Go in once. You know if there are no questions, I'll just put you back in smack dab in line with your friend Phil. He'll, he'll just keep talking. We'll get an, another version of Phil. Phil 1.0 or 2.0. We'll, we'll find one. Any questions before we jump off for tonight? Go in once. Go in twice. Go in three times. Well, thank you all very much. The purpose I put this together really was to help people who have not been doing well on the test multiple times. It's always sad to hear when someone put in money, time, attention, put the family on hold. It's, it's very sad, you know, and a lot of people who feel their careers are in the balance. You know, like one student who told me management is demanding, management wants blood. It's just sad. Another student said, Phil, my, my management said I haven't passed the exam. They want their money back for the course, the course that I took. It's sad. And that is what drives me to help people pass the exam. That is why I'm always giving tips and tricks and the like. Okay? Well, the videos will keep playing. Don't worry. If you've got questions much later on, you can drop them in. As soon as I'm able, I will respond to you, get you an answer. But for now, I'll leave you in the capable hands of your buddy, Phil. Failing the PMP exam is something you don't want to experience. Lots of money 
and moreover, a lot of time that you cannot ever regain, go down the drain. Once upon a time, there was a student who didn't do too well on the exam. And I was wondering, what can we do to get this student in a better state? So jointly, we came up with this idea of an Excel file that will help track progress, that will help track what happened on the exam and how you can do better. I put together a page called the PMP exam failure stamp out page, purposely for people who have failed the PMP exam to help them in their efforts 